Thanks again for joining us and welcome back to another episode here at the Tom Rose School. And in today's video, we are going to be teaching our dogs the automatic sit when halted. This is another exercise that you're gonna see in a lot of different competitive obedience routines. But even if you're just training your own dog and you want good solid obedience, pet obedience, having an automatic sit when halted is something that is desired by a lot of people. And we're gonna show you exactly how Tom Rose likes to do it and how he likes to teach his students here at the Tom Rose School to be able to achieve that high score when you're competing. So let's get started. Okay, at this point, we've started healing. We've been through it. We showed doing the follow with young dogs, flipping from the follow into heel position, walking, keeping good attitude. If we lose focus from the dog, we go backwards and continue with the follow till we get the attitude back, turn around again. We got good focus. We can continue with healing. Next thing is to develop a nice, straight, quick sit at the handler's side when they come to a halt. We've already talked about the making the correction upward with the leash, pushing down on the rear to get the dog to sit. A lot of them already from the puppy imprinting don't even need that. We can do that with the food. There's a lot of ways we can get them into a sit. Maybe able to just tap them in the rear and get them to go into a sit. We want to do this with as little negative as we possibly can. We would like to have as much positive in play here to keep the dog happy about it, where he's sitting not because he feels that if he doesn't, he's going to get something that he doesn't want, something that's uncomfortable, but instead if he does it, he gets something he does want, which would be the food or a ball or whatever she's using. Might mention for a minute about using a ball or a toy. A lot of people like to use it in healing. I don't because what it does it makes the dog turn and go crooked. So if you hold the ball here and you heal, the dog is liable to wrap around you and start bumping your leg. And also, when you do a good performance and the dog sits, everything looks good, and you throw it, the dog is going to have to use energy to go get it. It's going to tire him out a little bit. Now we've got to start over. With food, I always use food with healing because I don't have to break my... Uh, maneuver out. I don't have to break what I'm doing. I can hold the food and continue to give it to him as I'm walking with it. So it's kind of your choice. There's a lot of really great trainers that would disagree with what I'm saying. This is my preference is to use food rather than a ball. I think a manna that's going to be demonstrating this is going to be using a ball. So our critique would be, is her dog straight? Is it sitting straight? Is there anything created by the ball that's a problem that we may think about training and maybe going with food, which she could easily do because the dog is an imprinted puppy that is equally happy to get a food or a ball. But he's more excited and more attitude, so to speak, when she uses a ball. Okay, we're gonna uh, begin healing. And when she comes to a stop, ideally we want the dog to sit immediately without touching her, but as close as he can be, with his front feet in line with the balls of her feet to her heel, looking up at her with a real quick, preferably tucking sit. We also brought that up in a previous video. You know what tucking versus rocking. A dog that rocks is gonna scoot back and that gives us a problem because we have a lagging sit. A dog that tucks is gonna always sit much straighter. Okay, so go ahead and begin healing. Halt, maybe um, maybe make a about turn and come around and halt over here. Okay. Okay, halt. Okay. So she, but from my perspective, he is crooked as he's healing, which you're probably aware of. Okay, forward. Okay, and halt. So the dog's doing a nice set. That time it was a fairly straight set, but it's still crooked with the butt out a little bit. Go down to an about turn and come back again. Okay. And halt. Okay. Once again, he's not touching. He's as close as he could be without touching but only slightly crooked. Okay, now that, that made him straight. Okay, forward. Okay, get behind if you can with the camera. 
Okay. And halt. Okay. Again, a nice quick sit. Uh, by popping the lead, she was able to get him to scoot back a little bit. Okay, exercise finished. The, using a bench, as we mentioned before, is the way we start all of our dogs. It really gives the handler better control, you're closer to the dog, and it's easy to fix problems. By putting the dog this near the rear of the bench, she should be able to uh, put him in a stand or sit and have him tuck. Like that time he tucked, he didn't move his front feet. Mm -hmm. Okay, if he's towards the rear of the bench, he really can't tuck. Tell him down. Push okay. Now back to a sit. I see. Okay. Again, a tucking sit. Why? Butt stayed where it was. Front feet didn't move. From the first sit you ever do with your puppy during imprinting, this is the kind of sit that you're going to accept. You will not accept any rocking sit ever. If you do, you're going to spend the rest of the dog's life trying to correct it. Probably never correct it. So. Do it again. Push And back up to sit. I see. Okay. That time he actually brought his, his butt up into him. Now, get him on the ground. And now uh, walk him and then do a halt. Okay. And watch his front feet. Okay. He tucked that time. Okay. Do, maybe do a stand or something. Gabu. Now sit. I see. Okay. That time he rocked. Did you see his front feet move back? Okay. Okay, do it one more time. Just. Okay, again, his front feet moved. So how can she prevent that on the ground? She's got it on the bench, but not on the ground. Best thing she could do is take her hand and push forward on the dog's croup. That would be right there where the tail comes out and kind of tuck his rear end under him. This age dog is going to be difficult. He's already pretty set in his ways. But with a puppy, it's real easy from the beginning to make sure they always tuck. When you're healing with a dog and you come to a halt, the dog has to sit without a verbal command. So anytime she stops, the dog should automatically sit. Okay, there may not be a verbal command, but there is a body signal, and that is the fact that she stopped. So for a while, we're going to say sit as we come to a stop sit as we're stopping. So sit, and that, as that left foot is coming forward to come to the stop, you're saying the command sit. You don't want to stop and then say sit, because the dog's going to sit late. <coughs> so as you come to a stop, sit. That's when the dog should stop and sit, as that left foot is coming to stop. I always stop on my right and bring my left up. That gives the dog the most amount of time to sit correctly. Now, she's got dog sitting, and what I would, as a trust and judge or IPO, I would consider that sitting in a proper position. AKC would prefer that you move your feet up just a little bit. That that would be, a, <laughs> he did too. The, the sit would be pretty much in the small of your, in the arch portion of your shoe. Okay, so this dog is so sharp that you can issue the command at the appropriate time to get him to sit where you want him to sit. So let's try that a couple of times. Okay. Okay. That w as far as the AKC would be concerned, I think that would be a perfectly good sit. Uh, I like to see him a little for further forward, but that looks good. Uh, so as she stops now, she's going to do it without a command. And the dog has already done it so many times with the command, he really doesn't need it. He knows that when she stops, he's supposed to sit. Okay. Okay. Do it about turn and come back. Okay. Okay. Do it one more time. He sat. He's a little slower to sit. Okay. But he sat straight. Good. That looks good. Exercise finished. So he's sitting and the cue to sit is her stopping. So we call that an automatic sit and it, it all shows you would not be allowed to say sit when you stop. The dog should automatically sit when you come to a stop. Even with a service dog, that's what you would want.
Thanks again for watching. Make sure you do not forget to hit that like button. Subscribe if you haven't done so already because we post a new video every week. Thanks again and I'll see you next time.